There are so many different types of blades, but we categorize them into three types. We have the wooden blade, the metal blade, and the composite blade. The wooden blade isn't found in too many applications now. Now the reason is, is because they're in labor intensive to make. They're actually made of wood, laminated. The grains are going in different directions. It's covered with a fiberglass skin. See that there to keep the moisture out. And the leading edge spar here is a big piece of steel to help give it some strength. The, the leading edge protection is also made of steel that will be bonded on. But because of moisture and because of the cost and the weight, they're just not manufactured and installed any longer. These two are the majority of blades installed today. The metal blade, it is made of aluminum. It's actually quite light. So aluminum skin, aluminum honeycomb, aluminum D spar to give the leading edge strength for when you hit trees or small trees, twigs, we'll call them twigs. Um, and then in this case here, this is only a certain, certain part of the blade. There's this uh, inertia weight that they've added in here. And that inertia weight is to give the blades some inertia during auto rotation to keep them turning because the actual blade was, actu was too light. The actual blade was light and it was slowing down at the absence of engine power. So they had to give it some inertia. Uh, same with this here, that's also a brass mid-span weight. Also another aluminum blade, but as you can see a little bit different, there's no honeycomb. No honeycomb to help give the surface its contour, this, but instead it's got an I-beam here. So this one is a little bit flexible, so I can actually squeeze that down. This is not the preferred method. Same thing here, even less material, even lighter, but you still have that leading edge strength, strengthened area, missing the actual D-spar, more of a C-spar, as compared to this, where you have the D-spar. Now, composite blades made up of a composite material, could be carbon fiber, could be uh, just standard fiberglass, but much stronger, longer life with these blades. You can see here's the D-spar. That's also a carbon fiber or a composite with a resin imp uh, impregnated. Inside of here is foam. That's just a standard foam. Leading edge protection because composite isn't actually uh, abrasive resistance. Uh, we've added a leading edge protection of stainless steel to, pr to protect from rain and other damage and erosion. So all three types are creating lift, but it's the airfoil shape that's going to dictate the actual efficiency of the blade. This one here is a symmetrical airfoil. This one here is asymmetrical. So if I drew a line right down the center, this blade is going to be the same on both sides. If I drew a line down the center of this one, you can see the contour is different on the upper edge than it is on the lower edge. This one here, as you can see, is a symmetrical airfoil. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a history, these are the blue blades from the A-Star. These are the older blades. When they came out with newer versions, they changed the profile of the blade. And I've got a, one here that's cut, so I don't, I'll have to lift up the camera. As you can see, with that blade, it's asymmetrical. And that is the newer style main rotor blade on the A-Stars.
Here is the main rotor blade on a Jet Ranger. You can see the aluminum honeycomb and the aluminum skin with the aluminum D-spar. Repairable. If the profile starts to wear away due to rain or erosion, you can dress that up, assuming you don't take too much material off. Schweitzer 300, you can see here, no D-spar, more of a C-spar and hollow inside.